So, good afternoon. Um, is everybody still awake? Let's raise your hands. I know, <laughs> thank you. I know I'm the last presenter today, so I really need to talk about something uh, very interesting, right? <laughs> so let's start off with some questions. Uh, how many of you have heard about the term Industry 4.0? Let's raise your hands. Come on, let's move a little bit. Very good. How many of you have been working on Industry 4.0 projects um, for more than one year? Let's raise your hands. Okay, not so many. And how many uh, of you have worked on those projects for more than three years? Okay, almost anybody. Um, so I guess it is very difficult to define um, how to actually make uh, money out of uh, Industry 4.0 projects. And this is the topic what I will talk about um, today. It is actually very hard to define what Industry 4.0 really means, but for sure it consists of... Uh, of, um, of a huge hardware and software infrastructure, and it includes a very broad range of, um, of products and services. But at the end of the day, uh, in my opinion, the biggest winners of Industry 4.0 will be those companies uh, that find out very rapidly how to turn their data into tangible business benefits, so how, how they can make um, actually money out of that. And I, I state that um, based on my experience as formerly being a mechanical engineer working in the automotive industry and then making a transition into the world of, uh, of um, the industrial internet of things and data science. After, after five years of, um, of um, making um, airflow and, and structural simulations um, of cars in both Hungary and Germany, uh, I did a machine learning course just, uh, just for fun. Um, and that made, my, made me decide to, to change my careers, really, because, because the curiosity for these very powerful algorithms outweighed my interest in, in simulations. So I made this, this career shift, and I joined Reed Solutions, where we actually build smart factories and help customers um, monetizing their data in a very agile way. Some words about us. We actually have the highest number of enterprise grade Industry 4.0 system in implementations in Hungary. Um, they're actually in, in production environments so that people use it on a, on a daily basis. So we gained some experience on how to build those systems, how to reach tangible benefits using the Industry 4.0 approach, and how to define long term roadmaps um, for industrial IoT and Industry 4.0. But actually, getting those results is not that easy. Let's see why. First, let's consider the nature of data. Uh, please tell me if you agree, uh, what do you think? Is uh, data the new oil for manufacturing industry? Yes or no? Well, it turns out that, uh, that um, industry IoT and uh, data are transforming business and um, is really uh, is something wrong with the display? No, I'm sorry. Um, it's really disrupting businesses like um, telecommunications, healthcare, and e-commerce, as you've seen uh, before on this stage. Um, but in my opinion, manufacturing industry is a little bit different than that. The reason is that, uh, that manufacturing companies um, keep focusing on the same core act uh, on their same core activity, uh, and so their business models are not fundamentally affected by, by the use of data. So instead of hoping these technologies, big data, machine learning, so hoping for these technologies will disrupt the whole manufacturing industry, like for example, oil did in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, these companies rather want to use their data for making their production maybe a little more efficient. And maybe 1% of uh, productivity gain would make a huge difference um, for these companies. But let's see, yes, and this, this 1% uh, productivity gain is rather a revolution under the surface that is not, not really spectacular. But let's see how to actually start this revolution from the bottom. Well, imagine that you 
you, you're a manager at the large um, production facility and you place an order to, to digitalize your manufacturing machines um, at your factory. You start with, um, you start with a die casting machine and you see that you collect um, data more than two gigabytes um, per day on this one single machine and you see that you have more than a thousand machines that you would like to digitalize in the whole factory and at the end of the day it will mean having over 100, uh, one, uh, 600 terabytes of data uh, to be collected every single year and this is actually data on a very large scale which require experience and tools to handle and this re um, experience is needed to really make um, business benefits out of, out of the data. So, well, I'm, I'm sorry for, uh, for the display, but uh, I don't remember having those, <laughs> having those line, like, lines like this. I don't know what the problem could be anyway. Um, but the main thing is that um, it's, a huge, it's a very huge challenge for those companies. Um, but the good news is that, I'm oh, sorry, but the good news is that this data is available in a completely new and innovative way. Imagine that you can access this data, you can access and analyze this data uh, in real time and in depth. And you can go even further, uh, you can not only take this, this die casting machine in your production plan, but you can take um, data from many other sensors and many other machines. Uh, and therefore you may find very interesting correlations within um, your company. My, one of my favorite examples is a gluing machine at one of, uh, one of our clients. Um, uh, the two, pound, the two, two counterparts um, of the end product um, were not really uh, sticking well together under some mysterious circumstances. And after analyzing the data from different domains, so not only from, from the gluing machine itself, but um, um, from many other sensors from the factory, it turned out that there exists a correlation um, between um, these waste pieces and some combination of air humidity and the glue flow rates within that machine. And this, this shows the necessity of thinking really thinking um, in terms of complex events. So you need, need to think um, in, a, in a very complex way. So let's get back. Uh, imagine that you're digitalizing those machines, one after the other, and I guess you will end up having one of those faces. Um, here you can see someone is, uh, is frightened about the amount of data um, is frightened about, um, about how complex um, things uh, he's facing. But on the other side, there is uh, the other guy who's fascinated about the new opportunities that this, um, this data collecting methods can bring. And it means Buzz Lightyear is actually fascinated by this complex event space where he can navigate wherever he, he wants and um, take out the information that he needs. So to draw a conclusion, at the end. Um, actually, most of uh, the manufacturing companies we meet don't really have a very clear vision of what to use their data for. And they say it um, either as a huge um, challenge or um, a great opportunity. Let's see co some concrete examples um, and use cases what we've seen so far. An evergreen topic is uh, the redu uh, reducing energy consumption because it is really key to, to keep your costs down and, and um, achieve profitability. In this use case, um, at a chemicals company, um, we assume that there may exist patterns of high energy consumption um, that would correlate to, to distinct, uh, correlate to a combination of technological processes. In another example, let's imagine two remote reservoirs at the same company. Uh, in this case, you store liquid material in both. They are both material, but um, at one facility, uh, one reservoir 
contains the end, um, some side product of the main process, which happens to be the raw material, material in the other. So you need to transport this material, but the, but the challenge is that, that these material levels vary very rapidly. So it is very hard uh, for logistics personnel to, to work out models and work out practices to uh, when to uh, transport and when to, uh, how to optimize the production and consumption on the other side. Well, uh, what about quality management? This is another great field where Industry 4.0 can, um, can boost your performance. And uh, at, this, uh, at this use case, we were facing a, a traditional uh, quality management process, which included uh, um, collecting and processing of, uh, of flat, flat, flat files, uh, which involved a lot of um, human work. And uh, the, it, it meant uh, scaling up um, complications and uh, other difficulties. This process was, was literally crying for, for big data technologies and interactive dashboards that could have helped um, the personal spot uh, quality problems and act uh, in real time. And the last example is my favorite one because um, for a mechanical engineer with a, with a data scientist um, mindset or thinking, a fully sensor die casting machine is, is a very interesting thing. Um, even more interesting if it, if it um, produces waste pieces um, suddenly. Um, let's, see, let's say um, they have to stop the machine four to five times a day for cleaning the two surfaces because material started sticking on, on the surface. So it's a, um, it was a really interesting uh, problem and challenge to, to solve. Well, um, all of the above uh, promotes that uh, manufacturing companies need a, a mindset change, or I risk this sentence, maybe a culture change, in order to exploit the benefits that Industry 4.0 can offer. Well, to summarize the proceedings, I've seen best practices at manufacturing, uh, at manufacturing companies that were really great achievements and uh, great optimizations. But uh, on the other side, they, they left only little room for improvement. Um, and um, so, well, as a leader of such a company, it is really important to find um, new ways and new approaches. And you should probably start dealing with big data on a large scale and pro possibly use machine learning to reveal information that, that could put you um, at least one step ahead of your competition. And I think uh, the two, um, well, the two examples, the two machines are, are both um, state-of-the-art technology from their era, but, but you can see that, um, that the philosophy and the approach to transportation is, is very much different, and the enabler for this, um, this transformation is the technology itself. So well, how do you approach such uh, situations and um, production plans? Well, um, we are building our Hadoop-based um, reach big data platform, which enables not only technically dealing with big data, but also, also helps um, companies, engineers, and managers um, utilize that, uh, that value that is lying in data. For example, um, uh, the platform lets engineers build their own data pipelines and, and deploy machine learning models that are um, not so easy to do. And it means that um, after a technology shift, there is also a mindset change that is, that is uh, really important. Okay, let's see what results it can bring if you... If you um, have all of the above. Well, uh, with energy saving, we, we, could, um, we, we could recognize the patterns of, of large, large energy consumption. And we, we have built a, re a real-time reporting dashboard. Uh, 
that could that could help engineers fine tune their technology process and um, reach about 10 percent in in the uh, energy uh, cost savings so it means that this project had a return in only six months uh, remember the raw materials the liquid materials in those reservoirs um, We've built a basic prediction algorithm and uh, built a real-time messaging system to, uh, to email the operators, email the logistics personnel uh, to avoid those extreme situations where, for example, in one reservoir you had um, the full level, so production had to be stopped on one side. So there were such bottlenecks which could, be, which, which could have been avoided with such a system. The test line. Um, well, actually, the most interesting part of this is this project is an anomaly detection system combined with, um, with a, a real-time and interactive dashboard. And it helps, um, helps the quality um, personnel identify problems in, 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 um, in product quality immediately without any time delay. So they, they can act on these problems and uh, make interventions even in, uh, in production. So it means cost savings in, in quality management reach uh, 5%. And it was a, quite a big project, so um, it generated good return in 15 months. And the most interesting one, the die casting machine. Remember aluminum sticking to the surface uh, in some mysterious ways and we are seemingly without any, any reasons. Um, the predictive algorithm could reduce uh, downtime of the machine by 30%, and hence uh, making a productivity improvement of about of uh, slightly more than 2%. And it means that this project had a return of about eight months, well, if I remember well. So you see that uh, um, so you, you see some some really good results. And the good news is that you don't have to wait. Uh, long years to to have good results uh, with industry 4.0 well uh, and what is the role that that is leading us um, to achieve those those great results well let's consider first let's consider uh, an industry 4.0 architecture that was um, that was proven already proven in industry well Cloud computing has been a, a huge buzzword in the last couple of years, right? And um, it has, of course, has its reasons because um, cloud computing has a really high computational power. Um, it provides, provides great accessibility and uh, a very high flexibility. But on the other hand, why would you like to, to send all of your data into the, up into the cloud? for, for real-time analysis and, and uh, centralized decision-making, if you can do it where the data itself is being generated and being locally stored. Of course, with low latency, uh, you can take immediate, immediate actions, and this is what we call the edge computing. But then we can ask the question, why not combine the advantages of both? So another buzzword, to learn now is fog computing. Basically, it means bringing the advantages of, um, of the cloud to your own factory. Um, in a little more detail, it means that uh, production companies would like to, or uh, in practice they would like to have an on-premise cluster where they, they have this high computational power with low latency, um, with which they, they, can, uh, they can do real-time analytics and do machine learning. And this is, this is what I think that is the, the real smart factory functionality. On a corporate level, a manufacturing companies um, mostly use, most frequently use a, a private cloud. And they send, um, send data up to this private cloud um, that is already filtered in order to, to make, um, make analysis for, for global business operations. The approach uh, that could help realizing those, those Industry 4.0 projects is the following. 
So it is essential to understand um, the technical problem and the business problem, of course, including the exploration, the very careful exploration of, um, of all powerful, of all um, possible data sources uh, within that organization. And then we enter this iterative loop where we prepare the data, and then model data, and try to find um, trying to find the best suitable model. Um, and after a sufficient state is reached with our model, we can go on and evaluate business insights because I think is it is really important to prove to you that your investment was a hundred percent worth. So, shall we begin? Let's do it.